Hello, I'm Orbeta, your Welsh engineer, and welcome to the Space Plane Development Program, or the SSTO, uh, wherever you want to call it. In any case, in this episode, we are developing a Mark III SSTO that's going to take us into orbit on the random man, land on the man, and then take off. However, things do not go to plan. As you can see from my design, it's a simple one. A few changes are made from when I recorded the build. And here we go, taking off. We have about, what is it, nine rapier engines and four nuclear nerf engines. The reason why we have four nuclear nerf engines is because we need that to be able to land on the man and also take off. Because it takes quite a lot of energy and, yeah, we don't want to be stranded on the man. However, if you jump to time code 6 minutes around that time, you will find that we do need a rescue mission, and we call on the professionals. Uh, okay, the second best of the professionals, but you will see when you get to time code 6 if you're going to watch this uh, from this point on. But first off, let's get this into orbit. So, for the ascent for this craft, what we do is get up to about 5 kilometers, boost up to 400 meters per second, then slowly make our way up to about... 7 kilometers, and then once we get up to there, we pull straight up and go straight to the heavens. And as fast as possible. I think in this one I was trying to aim for about at least 1300 meters per second, but before the engines started slowing down, we got close to 1200 meters per second until we had to switch the rocket modes of the, of the um, uh, rapier engines. That's what they're called. Yes, indeed. I have wondered about a couple of possibilities of SSTOs, which people have probably already tested, like a large winged SSTOs, which will get us up to the high altitudes slowly, obviously, and then we boost up into orbit, orbital speeds to get into orbit, or we use jet engines as well as normal rocket engines and see how that works. Now, I assume this has been tested, this has been done, and probably the way I'm doing it here with rapier engines is the easiest way, maybe not the most efficient, but at least the easiest. Anyway, you've probably seen this before, we boost towards the man, we leave the curb in behind, and then we get into orbit around the man. And with this mission, what I have planned is to land this on the man and release a payload. We'll see when we land it, I'm not going to spoil it. Uh, have to have something to show rather than say jump to this time code and look at this rescue mission <laughs> or if you were deciding to skip this part of the mission and just go straight to the rescue at least have a look at the intro and if nothing else the intro of the six minute time code i found it was pretty fun to create that intro you will see when you see it <laughs> anyway a little tip for those who are landing with the space plane and i have to tip her off in a certain way Take a lay of the land, make sure that when you land, it's going to tip over in the right direction. This is not the first landing, this is in fact the second landing. The first one, we tipped over on that back and I did everything possible to try to flip this over, but it was nothing worked. So yeah, I had to reload, luckily I done a quick save. And here we have the little mini rover. Uh, why we need an SSTO to drop this off, could have used a small rocket to do this. Uh, why not? Firstly, we needed Kerbals on this mission because, yeah, we need Kerbals. This is Kerbal Space Program. And secondly, this is SSTO development program. So we need an SSTO. Yes, those are the points and reason why. Anyway, while we're getting samples, now it's time for Kerbals to get him home. I think we've got Valentina, either Bill or Bob. I think we've got Bill on this. Um, oh, he's in the corner, yeah, Bill. And we can't have Bob. There's a reason why we can't have Bob on this mission. Okay, let's take that off. When you're taking off from the man with nerf engines, first off, point up as much as possible while you're accelerating forward. That is so you don't hit mountain ranges. I done a quick test to see if I could boost straight forward. It didn't work well. Let's just say some of those crater edges are a lot higher than you think they are until you get close to them. Now, while we're getting to orbit, let's talk about the tips that you guys have been giving me. They have been great, very helpful. I've moved the front landing gear a little closer to the center of mass. The rear ones are already close to the center of mass, which makes taking off a lot easier. Also, center of masses have been fixed when empty and full. And also, uh, what was the other tip? Yeah, aliens on the canards at the front. I've taken the canards at the front off 
to shift the center of lift and uh, not affect the center of lift. Uh, make sure its center lift is correctly placed. Now we're in orbit. Um, uh, we've only got 228 meters per second delta V left. Now I tried everything. Tried to an extra sling slingshot around the man, go into a very high orbit around Kerbin, and then returning. Nothing worked. I could not use that 280, 228 meters per second to get back to Kerbin. Even just to use the atmosphere as a grav uh, aero brake. Not even gravity slingshots around the man. You know, doing multiple orbits and stuff. Probably could have done it if I planned this properly, but hey, I had to do an intro and everything. So the story is, I wanted to call the Blunderbirds, but I didn't have their telephone number or how to reach them. The Thunderbirds obviously weren't on this world, so I had to call the new rescue team on the block. And they are... On a lonely planet slowly spinning its way to damnation, one team stands next in line for the herds, sacrificing their lives for those unaware of the Alt F4 option. Yes, it's the short and pitiful adventures of Bob and his expendable team of Kerbal Arts. They are the BL Underbirds. Kerbals you wouldn't want to save you if they were the last Kerbals alive. Sacrificing the Kerbal race to save a few stranded Kerbals for a video. So join us now for their new misadventure. Yes, it's the BL Underbirds, and do not use Alt F4, that will close Kerbal Space Program or anything else you're running at the time. I was going to call them the Flunderbirds, however, Matt Lone told me that someone else had already used that. In fact, that guy's name is Latmone. I don't think it's really his name, but he's taking a piss take out of uh, the, Flunderbird, uh, the Blunderbirds. And damn it. So to avoid copyright, I put some full stops and they called them the... BL Underbirds, which stands for, what did I call them? Ah oh yes, the basically loony Underbirds. Basically, they're the underdogs of the rescue uh, team, or whatever you want to call them. I was going to call them the bloody loony Underbirds. If you can say that three times fast, that's the third time I've tried to record that a little bit. But yes, basically, I wasn't sure if YouTube would censor me for using the word bloody in the video, but uh, hey, I've already done it, so we'll find out. But let's get back to the rescue mission. Mission, As you can see, I'm using the Mark II SSTO that I built in the previous episode. We used this to build a basic space station around the man, and it worked quite well. However, it did flip out of control, and on two occasions when I was coming short to the runway for landing, I spun out control, so yes, I used this design. However, I have fixed the center of mass. I've worked out, I downloaded a mod which someone told me to download, which tells you where the center of mass is, when the fuel tanks are full, and when they are empty. And that is a godsend. That means you can balance your craft. Right, here we are to rescue the two Kerbals that are stranded in the orbit around the. Balls! I knew I should have called Matt Lone and his blunderbirds. But do not worry, here is a rescue we did earlier. Yes, this was done earlier than the last shot. So how do I plan on taking these curls back? Adding fuel to the other SSTO? No, we're not. In fact, we're going to transfer the Kerbals to a rescue pod which has been retrofitted into the Mark II SSTO. Also, a mod that you may find useful is EVA Enhancement Mod. That mod basically allows you to, to use the caps key to activate the fine control, as I do by here. You see I've got fine control. Normally, you don't have that option for Kerbals, and that means your Kerbals just fly off in the other general direction without killing your velocity, and then they go smashing into the spacecraft before they can enter the capsule or whatever, or you miss the ladder and they finally run out of EVA fuel, especially if you're on a long journey. But yeah, come in close, activate the caps to find control, and as you can see, we're not slowing down as much and we have a lot finer control, and obviously you can't remove your helmet in space. I keep on hitting that key, I think it's the J key when you've got... Uh, it, Curable Inventory System mod. That mod will allow you to add inventory space to your Kerbal, as well as being able to remove the helmet and a couple of other things. 
It's a mod worth checking out. I think you need the Kerbal Attachment System mod and the Kerbal Inventory System mod as well. But let's get these Kerbals back. And as you can see, we have a lot of fuel. In fact, we've got more than plenty of fuel. I still have to work on balancing fuel for missions as well as getting into orbit around Kerbin. I'm able to get SSTOs in orbit around Kerbin. No problem now. Well, almost no problem. Obviously, I need a few test runs during the building process. Perhaps I'll get you guys along on the building process and all the stupidity things that I do. I'm not sure if you'll make a fun video, but it might be a bit fun, I'm not sure. I'll see what happens, because I don't normally record the builds fully, which is a pain because I sometimes want to add certain things, but perhaps I could add the testing. Let me know what you think. You guys are probably the connoisseurs of SSTO designs anyway, so you'll probably just be screaming at the screen. Anyway, the Kerbals have re-entered safely. Although they have spun out of control, they have regained control. I think it has something to do with going hyper-velocity speeds and trying to control the craft angle it correctly. I'm not sure the SSTO design was like that. Although at super speed, supersonic speeds, it seems to work quite well. I think it's hypersonic speeds at low altitudes in, th in the thicker atmosphere. So, yeah. A little bit more development. However, we're still working, we're still in control. That's so why I say this is a successful redesign of the Mark II SSTO. I've still got the Mark III SSTOs to work on, but yeah, at a later date, I think. But we're coming in for landing. Oh, so we thought until they eject the rescue Kerbals. So Valentina and Bill are safely descending. Okay, this I did not expect. Uh, I think these Kerbals, are, the BL Underbird Kerbals, are genetically linked to lemmings, and that's why they're expendable. <laughs> anyway, Valentina and Bill have survived. They have returned. They can remove their helmets. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, click that like button and I'll hopefully do another video soon. I'm Orbeta, trust me, I'm an engineer.